right. Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to the meeting of the Conservation Commission for September 10, 2013. Um, and um, in the, uh, I'm going to take the in new business by May 1st, Robert O'Connor. Do you see that? I'm going to take it out of order if I may. Okay. Um, what are you doing? I'm going to take the notice of the tent oh, yeah. of Robert O'Connor oh. out of order. Is that all right? So the first item I'm going to take. Okay, out of new business. So why don't we have Mr. O'Connor come up? Um, Mr. O'Connor. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. So this is the notice of intent um, for House on 223 Market Street Extension. Correct. And I should just read out, I think it's on the color. I should just read out the DP number is SE084. Oh, SE084, I'm actually going to give you two plans. The first one, the first plan that I, that I gave to you is a plan from 2004 that was submitted to the Conservation Commission uh, for a single family house and was approved um, by, by, the, by the Conservation Commission 2004. Uh, Mr. O'Connor had um, um, gone forward and he had, uh, he, it was actually as you can see on the, on the 2004 map, there were two lots. Uh, and on uh, the northerly lot, he, he constructed and finished um, a single family house. On the second lot, um, lot 27, um, he had, he had um, constructed the foundation and the retaining wall uh, that, was, um, uh, that was required by the Conservation Commission. Uh, and at that time, the housing market kind of fell apart. And um, he was going to wait for it to resurface, and as you know, it didn't resurface for quite some time. And, and now um, he wanted to go forward. Uh, when he um, went to go forward, we came back to you, uh, to to you people um, in July, because his notice of intent and his order of conditions had expired. So we had come in and we asked for a certificate of compliance for not finishing basically which you you people granted to us uh, it was the thought that we were going to come back with a new new notice of intent which is what we're doing tonight um so uh, what i the reason i gave you the the two plans is i just wanted to show you the similarities to the um to the 2004 uh design and the 2013 design basically what he would like to do is when they looked at the wall that exists today and they looked at the foundation in place um, they were the integrity of both were compromised so uh, what Bob would like to do with your approval and your permission is to remove the present con concrete retaining wall uh, because it is cracked uh, and it does have a, f a four foot fence on it and he wants to replace that with one of the um, interlocking um, retaining walls <coughs> and again put the four foot fence on top of that because that was one of the requirements from the previous um, order of conditions uh, because it was so close to the, re the, to the detention basin um, is, is a safety factor uh, and also what they also looked at the um, uh, the existing foundation and that that too had been compromised so what Bob would like to do is to remove the foundation walls to the footing and then rebuild the walls um, in the same place um, and then and then continue and, and, and complete the uh, and complete the single family house lot with the one car garage that's shown on the plan um, the bot we had the bot we had a botanist out there to reflag the wetlands and, and that's shown and it's shown inside inside the um, it's a very conservative line uh, and it's shown inside the detention basin because there is a uh, swale that runs through the detention basin and into 
the previous w uh, wetlands that was shown in the 2004 plan. So our thought was to be, let's be conservative about it, and we'll um, and, and we'll show the wetlands along the detention this, basin. This was a created wetlands. A created wetlands. That's right correct. Right there, where here. Right and there. It was because you put a detention basin. That's in. correct. It wasn't wetlands replication. No, it wasn't wetlands. No, it wasn't wetlands replication. It was. Okay, I just want to make sure that's, oh, that's what I was that's, still no, seeing. That, and that's that's fine. That's fine. That's a good question. Um, so. Uh, what we'd like to do is uh, is to put a uh, put a siltation fence along the edge of the wetlands line, and because the proximity is going to be uh, is is so close with the wall um, and the and the wetlands, um, he's you know the contractor. I, I just put in there on a note that it's so close that um, he has to take extra precautions uh, in removing the wall, and if he disturbs any of the any of the wetlands. Yeah, that's that's in the detention basin. He's required to replace it or reseed it um, um, to make sure that everything is everything is taken care of. Um, with that, if there are any questions, um, oh, one other thing is uh, I received some, uh, and I haven't looked at this yet. Um, there was a, a, a vendor that that had sent something in, in lieu of putting in the siltation fence. He want they were thinking about putting in what's called a. Um, uh, filter mitt, uh, and I'm not familiar with it. I don't know if you. Are. I think it's kind of like the same thing as the sock. Um, yes. Yeah. That 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 goes in. So um, if you wanted, if you could do that, I I, I would have a pro I wouldn't have a problem myself in, in allowing him to do it um, once I look at it. Mr. Newman, what have you heard of the filter mitt? Is that instead of the filter it's, it's basically a smaller thing of a hay bale, right? Okay, it, it just sucks up the water and so forth. It is small than a hay bale, but less chance of stuff getting under it. And it doesn't involve hay. Do you know what it's no. made of? It, it's like a sandy substance inside of it, or, or a. Um, it's like a mulch. Isn't mulch. It? mulch. Yeah. It, 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 usually, sometimes it has a seed mix uh, in no, it too, right? No, and yeah, all the absorbents that they use in garage and so forth. It's yeah. similar to that. Um, is it taken it, taken away then afterwards? Yes, it could picks up. It, it it doesn't break apart as easy as a hay bale if it's left there for a while. <coughs> it stays intact. I just happened to see one on the job uh -huh. just uh, recently, so that's why I'm. Familiar but do they need to be removed, Mike, at the end, or can they just stay in place? They can stay, but you know it's up to the owner whatever they want to do. Do they over time? That I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're a porous fabric. Is this going to be connected to the? Town sewer? Yes. I think you already are, aren't you? Presently, it's well, already sewer is. Sorry, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what There's some straight lines behind the original. What was that for? Uh, what's that? What happened for? was what happened was now then the original one, um, we asked to do a filling in the detention basin. So that cross hatched area is an area that was that was filled and was replicated oh, okay. on the other lot. Um, oh, okay. So it's it. all done. It was all done. The replication was done. Uh, the filling was done. Yeah, you needed to build up the That's bank correct. for the, the That's detention correct. basin. Are there any other questions or comments? The only thing I don't see is the clarification on right? I don't see it. <coughs> <clears throat> if there is any damage to the wetlands, uh, it's in, a, a, in the note. I, I, in, in the note, I have note number three. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I didn't see it. And just if I may, I'll read that. With the bordering vegetated wetlands so close to the proposed activity, the contractor must take extra precautions. In any area of wetlands disturbed by the removal of the wall shall be plagued. So any, sorry, any wetlands disturbed by the removal of the wall shall be replaced. And again, how close are we to the wetlands here? Uh, within a, a couple of feet. But the, the point I think I would make here is that before they put in the detention basin, there was no wetland there because the wetland line is way back here. Right. And that it is a man-made. Right. 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 Quote, um, you are being very conservative by, by flagging Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I haven't been out there s to look at this particular uh -huh. one. I might have, I don't think I, I saw this before. Um, 
You can't yeah. see. What? It's over. It's, it's over. It's overgrown. It's, it's, it's overgrown. Yeah, yeah but oh, so nobody right can see it. Right in the foundation. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, wow. it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, all Yeah, what a mess. But um, that would be my only comment. I think we're right on top of the detention base in Dennis. We're right there. So that um, that's probably, but that's where the wall is, too. It's correct. right on along that that's detention correct. base and top. Okay, so the resource area is the wetlands and, and the detention base. Correct. That's the two things. All right. Are there any other questions or comments? I'm going to put it out to the floor. Is there any comments or questions? And I'm going to bring it back. Okay, do I have a motion? And maybe what we'll do, just while we have it in front of us, is do you think we should do the orders too at the same time? Would that be the most convenient? Do the order, yeah. The yeah. order and condition. Do we have the forms for that? So we're just going to hand out. Um, we're assuming that we're approving it. Yeah, I am. I, we don't have to. I'm, I don't mean to assume that, sorry. It's just to have it in front of you yeah. when we go to next. I was getting ready to jump out of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should put your vote in right for it. Um, well, while, while Nancy is looking for that, um, uh, maybe do I have a motion to approve the uh, project as I've explained in the plans uh, that accompany a notice of intent and a notice of intent? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Bill, Mr. Newman. Okay. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'm going to, if they were all set, we are set, Mr. Paul. So I'm just going to pass these um, down to you. Do you need any of these? Dennis, do we need to close? Um, you know, one thing is the um, green card. We need to close the area. Sorry. We, we can use, which we did for the. This is oh, certificate of mailing. This is a new thing we're doing. Okay, so we're going to keep that. Keep out of your way. So, Nancy and I are going to fill in the rest of the form, yours conditions. But um, just quickly looking at the Dennis, standard. Do we need to close the hearing? Um, I was going to do. <coughs> oh, I don't know. The old-fashioned way was we closed the hearing, and then we did the orders and conditions. Yes. But okay. I, I don't. It's, con it's okay. Well, it's I'll close the or. Uh, okay. I'm still going to do. The, I think the orders based just. Yes, and we can still do the order. orders. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'll close the hearing on this. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Connell. Have a great night. So too, I'm looking, thank you. I'm looking at the standard order of conditions, and I see um, the first um, worry is erosion and sedimentation, sedimentation controls. And they ask that the siltation barrier be placed in a limit of work line, something feet from the wet wetland. And this project, we've just been told that literally the wetland is a foot from the replacement of the, of the wall, which is effectively what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So will we put one foot? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do one foot there. For and are we one. going to use a siltation fence, or do you want to use this thing that he brought up? You know, the advantage of that is that you don't bring the straw in from some other place outside of Abington. So <coughs> I've been looking all the time. I know a few other towns have been using, have been mandating that people use this, uh, you know. The sock uh, kind of mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, something that is, is, you know, that's not biodegradable from another area. Do you want to do that? He, he actually yeah. Do we have the name of that sock? No, but could we just cross out fence? And it's, it's still a siltation barrier, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Cross well, out fence. that's right. Yeah, siltation barrier. Right. And we'll leave it up to them. But um, if they're willing to do it. It sounds um, <coughs> environmentally a good thing to do, do we think? We can put it in our recommendations. Do you want to put a recommendation to use the sock? Um, yeah, um, sock is preferable. Siltation, uh, yeah, that, that might be the way to put it in parentheses. You guys okay with that? I think yeah. it'd be kind of cool. And then, so they talk, um, A talks about the soils um, and grading and loam and sweet um, seed. And I don't think we're really dealing with that, but certainly A1, A2, which is make sure there's no erosion. A3, stabilizing soil. 
and A6. Do you think I'm skipping on a thing here? Um, A4. A4, mm -hmm. yeah. And if they... And I think you still need A5, because if they dig a hole, they may not hit water, because we're right beside the wetlands. So you want to do A5? Yeah. Okay, so A1 through 6. Mm -hmm. And they have drainage. So we always require that they meet the... Um, do not alter the runoff for the site. There's B1 and B2. B3. I don't know if B4 is required in this case, because literally they're putting a wall. No. Down. So it's not a project where they're constructing something like a building. So B4 calls for a registered professional engineer to certify there's no increased runoff. What do you think? No. Do you think that's required in this project? Okay. Um, so it's not required. Okay, but you want three. Yeah. B5. The t there's no detention basin that they're creating. There uh -huh. is one there. Um, B6 is not necessary. That's talk calls for a parking lot burn. B7, I think. Yeah. It's a normal normal thing to alert us mm -hmm. if there's any problems, B7. There's no catch basin on here for no. B8, is there? No. So we're talking about B1, 2, 3, and B7. Flood control, do you think that's required here? No. Surface water and groundwater control, we have D. I don't think anything is required here in D. Uh -huh. yeah. And then wetland replication plan. So he's not doing that. He did do it in the earlier projects. He's not doing it in this one. So it's not necessary. Wildlife habitat protection. Nope. Um, there was a thing most intended um, referring to wildlife, but I don't think it's an issue. On site conditions. So on site conditions literally mean that they have to follow and keep an eye on the wetlands as they said in their plans. So I would think G1 through G7 should, uh, apply, okay? Where do we <coughs> want to have them stock, how far do we want them to stockpile the debris fill and excavated material on site from the wetland? There's a blank there. Well, let's see, how far do we need to put that? Is that? 50 feet. 50 yeah. feet. That's usually, that would have been what I would have thought. Okay. And then we move so all of G applies, which is just literally the <coughs> being careful of the wetlands. And then H is the administrative conditions. So I, that H1 doesn't really, um, we're talking about a wall here, so it's not really applicable. H2 says that this order continues with any mm -hmm. new owner. And of course, there may well be a new owner in this. Mm -hmm. um, H4 talks about construction contracts should be included. Yeah. H5 asks for them to get back to us on certificate of compliance. Yeah. Um, H6 talks about the two as-built plans. So it's really connected with it, but I don't think it's really required here. But I think it is. You think it is? Okay. But I, they would I, do it anyway because they, they need to they they because the first one H <coughs> Five doesn't require an as-built plan, but H6 requires the as-built plan. Some of the stuff doesn't apply. And they'll have one anyway, because they're doing the house, right? Yeah. And certain H7 says certain conditions are ongoing to do with a certificate of compliance. H8 says you do have to tell the uh, buyer of the new property of what the conservation said in the land. And H9 says this continues all the time on the land, the orders go with it. So H, um, H7, H8, and H9 are H6 is a critical. So all of them, actually. And then I is the work schedule and sequence of events. And it would be fair enough to say that all of I is a critical. Yes. Okay. And then special conditions. 
is J. So in special conditions, um, we talk about the SOC being preferable. Um, we should certainly encourage the contractors in doing that. I think that's excellent. So I think it's a very good point, Captain. Is there any other special conditions that you think are critical here? Building right on the wetlands, but very close to it. But it is, as, as Cathy pointed out, these are wetlands that were created from the change. They're, construct they're constructed well and, and they haven't really been there very long. Right. So I'm kind of uh, inclined to see that have a, a much better retaining wall put there because that will stay for a very long time. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I think it will be better for the detention basin and the wetland there. And it's the consensus of you all that the town bylaws to do with drainage also apply here. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I can yes. put that yes. in the order of condition. Yes. All right. Is there any other comment I on the order? Pass those back up to no. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. So we'll go back um, to our agenda, if we may, and um, pick it up at the beginning with the open space update. Um, I, I talked to. Uh, the town of Rockland, Alan Chalk, I've got, I've got to set up a meeting to go see him, and he was going to discuss what they did, um, who they used. I think they used Iron Horse as a contract. I'll also call, I've got to get a phone call into, um, I think it was Whitman, who was here in the town, and have him, and have him give us um, a little synopsis of what he does and what he would do, and if it would cost us anything, if it would not, and stuff like that. So. Um, the, the open space meeting, when is, what was that date again? Do October 8th, was it? Was it the yes. Yeah. So it's October 8th, okay. It was very exciting. So before, I mean, this is a town meeting, but it's a town meeting. I haven't sent out the invites yet, but I'll send them out to all the people. But if there's any particular landowners that you think might be interested in it, um, or people that you think, you know, um, might want to have them input in it, I know Mr. Dombrowski would be interested in it. Um, you know, just give me a shout or Nancy a shout and we can send out a note to them. Okay. Or just, you know, knock on their doors. Okay, so that's October 8th. We're going to have our open space meeting. Um, so, aha, uh -huh, I missed this. Um, the uh, We're going to have the continued hearing of the abbreviated notice of intent filed at the town of Abington for the restoration and preservation of concrete memorial arch and attached ground statutory at 200 Park Avenue, Island Grove Pond Park. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Right. Hi. Thank you all. My name is Doug Ulwick. I'm a volunteer for the town. Josh Crane, who is the town's paid consultant for this job, is off restoring monuments in Washington, D.C. for a few weeks. So I'm, I'm solo this evening. Um, the project, again, in summary, is we're not building anything, we're not tearing anything down. It's primarily deferred maintenance. But the deferred maintenance is happening as close as 30 feet to Island Grove Pond. So we're trying to tread lightly. The town has hired a consultant, uh, again, Josh Crane from Daedalus um, Restorers, who has written a couple of sections of specifications, which I have submitted to you. They should be in your packets. Um, they also commissioned a report from um, Simpson Gumperts and Hager, uh, who uh, did core samples and analyzed what was out there so we best understand under engineer stamp our existing conditions. Um, the work is twofold. Um, uh, first of all, to protect the bronzes on the arch and then to um, remove any accretions, if you will, on the arch, any, any uh, applied coatings or anything else that's come up, up across over the years. Uh, clean it and then grout all the cracks. Uh, the arch was a very unusual construction technique done in 1912. There's absolutely no reinforcing in it. Uh, they poured a very watery uh, arrangement of concrete so that the aggregates would come to the surface. The byproduct of that is that it took a very long time for the water to find its way out and it cracked to hell, basically, in the course of it. It was kind of the nature of what they did. Uh, so we have a badly cracked monument and part of the work uh, in terms of deferred maintenance is also to fill those cracks with grout. Once the concrete is taken care of, 
um, they would come in and clean the bronze. It's metal, it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be polished. And then they proposed to coat both the arch uh, with a non-graffiti coating and uh, the bronze monument first with a lacquer finish and then, uh, at monumentation rather, there are three pieces, uh, with a, a lacquer coating and then with uh, literally a, a butcher's wax type polish on top of that, which is a renewable coating and would have to get onto a maintenance plan to do that. Um, the organization of the specifications, well, first of all, uh, I've included two plans in the packet. One is sh showing limiting the access to the work area um, simply to the Park Avenue gated entrance and also shows a hundred foot setback from both the swimming hole and the pond um, saying that they can't park vehicles any closer than that. Uh, the anticipation of the sort of equipment they're going to be using after it's staged is basically something you can bring in on the back of a pickup truck in five gallon pails. It's, it's not a lot of stuff going on with that. Um, the process specified, and means and methods specified for doing the cleaning involve um, both chemical, but there is a peelable back type chemical, so we're not putting chemicals into the ground and into the air and everything else. And then also gives them the option of both steam cleaning, water cleaning, and um, uh, a bit of limited low volume sandblasting. For each of those, they specify that the area must be enclosed for that to prevent any overspray, any runoff, any whatever. And in, indeed, under this section also, they call for uh, the area to be, they use sandbags. I know that's a little unusual for most conservation commissions, but that's what this consultant said should be done. Uh, and again, after the clean, and, and there's a chemical list at the end of that part, and you'll find it. Hopefully, um, I see packets here that give the uh, material safety data sheets for all of the chemicals that they propose to use. That's a rather thick packet of materials, but we're trying to put out all the information we can at this point. Um, and again, they're proposing to then do. Uh, I'm sorry. One thing I skipped over um, the top of the arch where we feel there's been a great deal of water damage uh, has never had any capping on it and they're proposing actually a, a lead flashing cap. Uh, their consulting engineers actually had said bronze which probably would be my preference but they're going for aesthetics and color and think the lead will blend in better with the finished concrete by the time that's all done. So that's part of the concrete work and then we get into the bronze as I said it's, it's clean it uh, with various cleaning agents and then coat it um, with both the lacquer and the, um, the wax. Uh, and that is what we know about what we're proposing to do in t terms of deferred maintenance. This will be a publicly bid job and uh, following the specifications that I've included, plus again the whole normal raft of boilerplate and everything that goes along with it, but it's the nature of a public work, uh, publicly owned property, public monument, that it must be publicly bid. Um, and part of that package, we believe, should be in order of conditions so that anyone bidding on it understands what sort of thing they have to go through. Uh, that said, I would expect, and I wouldn't be surprised if you people would condition that whoever ultimately gets the bid should come in front of you people and, and be able to answer still more specifics than we have put on paper. We have put on paper what we know. <coughs> and uh, any, any help in terms of, of tightening it up in terms of uh, requirements that the Conservation Commission is looking for, we will integrate and include and would much appreciate, but um, again, the expectations is ultimately whoever is the winning bidder is we would expect to come in front of you. We already know from a preliminary meeting we had several weeks ago with uh, the building inspector, a, a member of your, your commission, and uh, the selectman's representative and the, and the highway park people. Uh, that they will have to submit a, a staging plan to the building department. So we already know that has to happen and we're prepared, uh, we will prepare the contractor to, to know that. So there is still some additional permitting to be done. And I think that's about where I'm at. So I, I'll answer any questions I can. Okay, before we do any <laughs> questions for Colin, I, I just, there are a few little house things. Um, an abbreviated notice of intent was the form that you filled out mm -hmm. and you filed. And of course that's used where it's, um, the actions are temporary in nature. Um, uh, the, it is within the buffer zone and it will less, disturb less than a thousand square feet. That's what the regulations say why you use abbreviated notice of intent. 
But um, no DEP number. You didn't file the DEP. I have. Uh, maybe it's not issued yet. It was only a couple of weeks ago, but I did indeed file. Oh, you did file mm -hmm. yet? Yes. All right. Yeah, but we didn't get the number. We didn't get the number. So today we would not be able to do the orders because the orders, our jurisdiction for the orders comes from DEP. Mm -hmm. Our jurisdiction to listen comes from selecting, you know, because it's really there. Absolutely. Today. <coughs> but we won't be able to do the orders for that. Um, and I think the, um, my only worry in the abbreviated notice of intent is that, Doug, that your name is on it. Mm -hmm. um, and you're asking us to do uh, orders. And I think, I'm sure everybody has a few comments I was reading. I learned a lot of um, vocabulary, I have to say. But just on the regulation stuff, mm -hmm. who do we hold accountable for this? Now, it would be the landowner, which is the town, be the town manager. It's the town. So it's his name that should be on the notice of intent. I filed it as an agent, but you know, if you want me to file an amended that shows the mm -hmm. town manager, I'm happy to do that. But I was acting as the agent for the town. Well, you don't want us knocking on your door. To uh, <laughs> well, you can, but I'm just going to simply pass the buck to the right. town who owns it and who is indeed my client. But as an architect, I've certainly done this before that you know my name goes on it as the professional preparing it but well there is another that this section. is an owner so right there is a section underneath that mm -hmm. and the section underneath that is usually the contract worker mm -hmm. because the rules are are uh, you know the orders are, are aimed at the contract mm -hmm. and of course that is the problem that I, I, I wasn't at the meeting but I got it that was the issue was that there was no contract well there were several but say, yeah yeah well there was nobody at your meeting there right that you could actually say this is the plan, this is the contract we're going to use, oh, no, this we, is the plan we're going to It hasn't been put out to bid yet. We're trying to put in the bid package enough information so that whoever is bidding on it understands what they're going to have to do, at least in broad general terms, to satisfy the commission. Excellent. Yes, I saw in item three of your papers the letter from Dadalus Inc. Mm -hmm. They do ask for, is there any other requirement that the Conservation Commission would have? So really, to done tonight, you're not looking for any orders, you're looking for just any other opinions we might have on, on the plan. Well, so what, 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 we should look, what we will be looking out for from the contract, is that right? I would like an order before we go out to bid. I was hoping that once we had a DEP number from it that we could have an order. And part of that order, I would expect, would say the contractor must must visit you folks to show I how we. I don't think we can do that, Dennis. No, I don't think so. Uh, no. So I'm having a problem with that particular okay. approach, um, I, and I'm sorry. I just didn't mean to just jump yeah. in because you're in the middle yeah. of something. But, yeah. well, that's uh, no, I, but I, I personally yeah. don't think we can do that. If and I'm, I'm not positive, but I'm asking you. You know better than I do. Once the DEP files a number, we don't have any control. Am no, I no, correct? no, no. This is the number is just that they have received it. It's official. Mm -hmm. We can't issue orders or conditions Without. until they get that number, so that they have to have mm -hmm. received it. And if it's been a couple of weeks, you may want to call DEP to make sure it got there. Absolutely, because it may have gotten lost. But you're right. It really so is a DEP file, Mike. So, um, so we're the first. We're the we're first. first. Um, what is uh, first battle the poor contractors go through and we lay out <laughs> the, uh, we interpret the rules as according to our our town oh, okay. but, but if only there's a problem appeal, as we DEP know as the problem the DP stands okay. in and actually the DP steps in and does everything right. that's why you know you would actually have to deal with the DP if there are some issues mm -hmm. as there may well be actually just on the chemicals that are being used here um, so DP may well stand in but they do supervise our filing they, they have it yes. it's just that they didn't issue the number yet Oh, okay. Um, All right. So, but yeah. uh, but my point was. Yeah, you know, I wonder. I wonder the reason. What they did. Um, we're looking. Nancy and I are looking at the email. We get emails of the numbers that are issued. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how we know that mm -hmm. we can talk about this case. And um, for instance, Mr. O'Connor's filing, which we had before, they issued a number. Very um, straightforward project. But your plan, they didn't issue. So that's what I'm thinking, that they were looking at this and they were reading the exact same thing as me. They were thinking, well, Doug Elwick probably doesn't own the t uh, land and is he actually doing the work or is it somebody else who's doing the work? So that's why maybe we have to revise the notice of intent. Would that be right? We really may. Maybe that has to be revised. Well, I mean, I'm looking at what I filed and the applicant is clearly listed as town of Abington. The representative is me. Uh, but the applicant is very clearly the town, okay. uh, and so I mean I felt very comfortable turning in the paperwork I did because yeah. I am representing the town, volunteering to do it, but I am. But the applicant is the town, okay. and that's all right. That is the WPA form four that was sent in, and I yep, gave to you guys as well. I, I hope. Yeah. 
um, but Dennis, I wanted to go back to a more basic. That's a good question because I'm still not sure that Doug, you want to take that liability on, and that you don't <laughs> want the town manager to do that. Mm -hmm. That would be my comment from there because I want you to be protected. Thank and you. It makes more sense mm -hmm. that the town, if we revise that, I think it's a simple revision. But my issue is that I don't think we can issue a set of orders and conditions for what we have for a filing and make the contractor come back afterwards. That's not how this works. Right, because we'd be asking and him So to it's backwards, all, guys. Right, and and that, that's my order. problem. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't. We can't do, we can't that. do that. Um, so um, that, I think, will become problematic for us. Yeah, and that, 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 for me, is procedurally an issue. I, I'm not understanding this. I, I would think whoever comes in to do the project is going to have to follow your lists, you know, 1A, 2A, 3A, 5A, well, before they et, et cetera. Yes, but um, before they, if I can drop, before sure. they do that, they have to tell us what they're going to do. And so do you know what they're going to do? What, what of my Excellent. filings Excellent. Haven't, Excellent. You, haven't you got? Hmm? Well, actually, we don't know. I, I mean, actually, I do have a few problems with it. We can actually go into the actual um, undercurrent, but we don't know, actually, what you're going to do. What we are told are what can be done. And they've given us a whole group of different chemicals that can be used. We will not know because it's going to be one of those things of try this. This might not work. So if this doesn't work, try this. And the contract is going to have that same problem. And, and it says right in these specifications, as a job manager, he will oversee, he will see, yeah, okay, that didn't work. Plan B. I'm looking at the faces of the commissioners here, mm -hmm. and I don't think they're too thrilled with the idea that they have to hit a moving <coughs> target. Honestly, I mean, well, you I mean, have I can to have a very specific. I can come in here and tell you that okay, we're going to use this chemical. Well, you can't because you're not doing. Okay, it. anyone can come in here and tell you no, we're going to your use contractor. this. The contractor can yes. come in here and tell you we're going to use this chemical. Excellent. And then it doesn't work. Is he going to have to, for every time it doesn't work, come back in here and say, oh, well, you know, that one didn't work. Now may I have permission to do the next one on the list that, that this consultant has said it, would be yeah, acceptable would be, to do this? If, yeah. if it's not listed and DEP doesn't know about it, it, would, it wouldn't, wouldn't fly, though, would it? No. It no. I mean, if you're looking for one method that's going to do this job, it doesn't exist. But I think the issue I'm having with Doug, and I'm trying to, we're trying to work with you. I understand, we're, I appreciate we're really, it. We're really not trying to give you our time. It's just that I think it is, uh, the filing's a little awkward for us because mm -hmm. we really can't give you a whole lot of advice how to do this. It's not something any of us know how to do. But for me, every chemical and how you're, the approach you're going to take may have, you may have to adjust how you're handling the collection of the liquid and the dust and how what you're handling because some of the materials I mean I'm, I'm seeing all sorts of chemicals in mm -hmm. here and I'm going through the MSDS's and some of them um, have warnings about toxicity in animals though <coughs> I'm, I'm not really I haven't had a chance to really think about what that means what a, a small quantity would be right. but there some of them require go goggles mm -hmm. and if they're in a confined space if we're asking them to enclose it they're gonna have to wear respirators mm -hmm. so that some of that stuff each chemicals going to have a different sort of setup almost is what I'm worried about. But I, I understand exactly what he's talking about because I deal in pesticides mm -hmm. and like a malathion might work on something where a tempo doesn't okay and stuff like that so the application is going to be the same it's the product that is going to change right so it's not it's in as far as all your safety items and so forth that's all regulated mostly for instance the pesticide bureau regulates us on what we have to use and so forth, the respiration, rubber boots, etc. So I don't have a problem with either or with the chemicals. Mm -hmm. I really don't because I do this every day but with a pesticide. And that's what happens. <clears throat> right. And um, like if you're using an insecticide as far as a pesticide, there's so many different insecticides and there's so many different formulations that you can use. If you're going after mosquito, it's one formulation because we use concentrate and if we're just going after a canker worm and so forth, it's less because it's a smaller bug and doesn't need the intensity of the con uh, con concentrate. So I understand exactly what he's talking about. And if you have an acetone and that's not working and you have to use X, Y, Z, I understand it. Yeah. But, but you're, you're, you'll have the same um, Preventatives as far as the earth and mm -hmm. so forth. I understand. I understand. I, I, I go along with you. Fine well, with this. Well, like pressure washing. 
Well, it has large volumes of can, water. Can I That's stop us? Water, can yeah. I stop though? Can I stop us then? And, and let's take what Kathy and Mike said and what you're looking for. And let's move the conversation then to um, the actual um, project that you know the material that he has um, provided. So, do you have any comments? Oh, I do have some comments. I do. Well, 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 firstly, what are the resource areas we're talking about here? That's my first one. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I know that it sounds automatic like because it's Isle of Grove. But seriously, what are the resource areas? There's the pond, there's the river bank, the water bank, the swimming pond bank, there's the fish. Okay. There's um, any wildlife that are there? There's a, it has on the maps, shows rare and endangered species uh, throughout a good part of Island Grove. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be addressed, which right. is probably one of the things DEP is going to tell you to do. You're going to have to contact them to deal with that. Um, it is um, also in the flood zone. And I don't think we have a delin actual delineation of you know we where the bank is because when I pulled the map, the bank actually the the water because the flood level goes up and down, you know with the flood. Where's the edge of the bank, and where is there wetlands right there, or okay. not? Well, and I, I don't know. Be, I don't want to sound smart, but you know the bank is right there. I mean, I don't. Think but you know, but uh, but, where the bank but is. my it's point got a is, bulkhead. but it what? It's got a bulkhead, stone. Yeah, this but is bank because you're really looking at. I but mean, there's very to say it doesn't deal with. The but staff. we, they are definitely. The but he's definitely within. Uh, I mean, no matter what, there are everything's within 50, 25 feet. Thirty of, feet. And that's thirty feet. But my yeah. point on is, my where is the actual? You know, we don't show that on the plan though. That okay. needs to be shown on the plan. Okay, so let's move forward then. Um, talk about um, from the resource areas. Uh, what your work is, um, and has anybody comment about what the, what the plans were? Any comments on the actual plans? That um, I was confused by the, um, if you don't mind walking us through how you're planning on setting up the work. Um, on the, I think you had a, a schematic here. Uh, there were two plans. And one yeah, was you uh, have a little a site. Yeah, you have a little circle on the front one that, that says work area. That applies to the next page, that little circle. Okay, so that's this. This that's is your that. work area. Right. And, um, I guess my question is, how big is the work area? Because there's no dimensions. It doesn't look like it's that big. No, it isn't. It's it's the under. What was the the trigger fund for the uh, abbreviated notice? It was under a thousand square feet. So um, it, it really is enough to just go beyond the monument itself and stage it, and and then shroud the staging. And that's so really all we're looking at. So for this abbreviated notice, <laughs> a, a intent to to apply. Um, and you don't go over that threshold, you probably should put that into your spec, that well, thousand. Right here, 656 square feet. Right. But um, yep. is that going to, I'm trying to understand, are you going to, are you going to just hand carry everything over? Um, you, I know you said you were going to park the trucks in whatever else you have, you're going to have a work area have, over here. We have pickup trucks, we can back them up to that and then park them elsewhere. We're dealing with five gallon pails. And the w elsewhere is the area where I said on that plan delineated park more than 100 feet away, park vehicles behind this line, and that's the 100 feet off of the swimming hole and off of Island Grove Park. Uh, the, the thing that I have, I'm looking at this and it just, it just doesn't seem like there's mm -hmm. enough information. Okay. One, one would be um, how are you going to collect the liquids? And I'd need to see like a containment area of how the liquids are going to get contained okay. and the staging in inside the containment area to make sure that it is all encompassed inside that. Um, it, it just doesn't seem like there's enough. I, I mean, we could see, I still don't, unless I see that, I, I really can't put an order of condition on that. I could tell you that that's what I would be looking for if you were going out to bid for this. I'd say complete containment underneath that. It's got to be shown. The staging has to be inside the containment area. It's got to be um, completely in in covered inside of it. Um, the other thing is, is what is on the arch right now? Is there stuff on the arch right now that is caustic or hazardous? No, that was covered in the engineer's report in okay. terms of they did core samples. On the arch. And they did an analysis of what was there. So there's and, and there's lime plaster lime on plaster, there. No there's some asbestos, no. There's some paint. Um, no lead paint, no. Not that, not that they noted down, and the whole monument is, is concrete. Okay. So, and they give you the actual makeup of the amount of quartz and the amount of horn blend and the amount of everything else in it. Right. So, Everything that's on there, I mean, the man-made stuff has been parging and, and painting. Right. Other than that, Mother Nature's put everything else there. Correct. Um, 
I actually have done this restoration and use restoration cleaner on buildings in Boston. Cool. Um, I know that is very caustic. Well, different chemicals do different mm -hmm. things, just like you were saying. I can you can you can brush on a, a chemical and then sandblast not sandblast it off, but power wash it off. But the power washer sprays, you know, aerated aerated little specks of water everywhere. It goes everywhere, so it has to be enclosed. They actually had talked about. Pardon me. The consultant had talked about right. the specification about the peel away materials yep. to avoid just that problem. Peel right. away. Well, peel away. But peel away, like referring to the, the actual chemical peel away that it will the product. Right. There is a, a, a chemical with a, a backing you put on it, and you remove the backing, and you remove everything else with it. It's not we're spraying not spraying this stuff out into right. the atmosphere. We're not power washing but, off but chemicals. You, but in your sealing it off. But, but right. in your spec. Yeah. Like yes. But one no. no. But right. But Basically. same thing too. Yeah, it's the, here. the I same would just thing. Make a suggestion when you're asking for your bids, that you ask whoever you're bidding, <coughs> who's bidding, to put down there, you know, their containment. What what do they use for their containment? Mm -hmm. That way, it'll be you're not trying to tell them what to do. They will tell you what they plan on doing, and if it's acceptable. But. But Doug, you have as some of your alternatives high pressure water and steam. Cleaning. Right, same thing. And to your point, so, also too. If so you do have that in there. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and I then expect we, to you would use need it. to collect the water. Right, and, and I you need that. to dispose of that mm -hmm. off site, mm -hmm. and that can be quite a volume as well. Right. Besides the container. And the same thing to your point, they might start using PLOA and it doesn't work. Right. right. And they might have to move to something else. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, um, I, I, the only my only recommendation would be to say that you start with the worst case scenario, and then. It goes up to but that way, and if if it comes in best case scenario where they don't have to do everything, peel away works great. If they don't have to do 100% containment, then they could, you know, they could always draw back down on mm -hmm. on savings or something like that. Well, we're calling already for scaffolding for shrouding the scaffolding. Right. So really, it sounds like the additional you're looking for is ground level containment well, and like and collection of runoff. Yes, mm -hmm. but because the other stuff we already own, yep. and and they did call for sandbagging, but there needs to be a lateral membrane. Is, is what it sounds like that they're not covering in these specifications is a lateral membrane collection. Right. And so anything that needs to be added to the specs. Yes. Anything that would go through the ground mm -hmm. can't. Can't. Mm -hmm. It has Get to be 100% contained. Mm -hmm. well, in fact, the plans, I just noticed the plans here all talk about that runoff and um, the runoff of chemicals. He notes that in proposed, let me see, number six, uh, that's material safety, but in the proposed land council details in the letter of Adamus in the report, we talk about runoff. Um, I just noticed that some of the chemicals are actually supposed to be harmful to fisheries. Yes. Uh, speaking of peel away number four, peel away one, and safe and easy architectural cleaner restore. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading your material. Certainly. Uh, and so they actually say that they are harmful. So, so the containment, containment lateral containment and collection issue. becomes important. Yes, yeah. and your chap talks about that. So I, th I think that's what we are, like you right. said, that's okay. what we're going to look for. And I don't coffee. know about anybody else, but I mean, if, if, if there's even a hint of, you know, the chemicals even being harmful to fisheries, do we even want to have it? Even if we do 100% containment, if there was something that happens, we had a hurricane or some came through, blew the containment out, and then all the chemicals go into the yeah. Well, into I was the actually going to ask about so. um, on-site storage because that's, you know, part of, I know there are five gallons, you know, is it da daily, are you going to take everything off? I think under this circumstance, we're going to have to require it. Yeah, and the second thing is that, um, you know, that, what, how are you, are you going to move um, any runoff that you may have or... Um, materials that might be hazardous at the end of the day to a storage area and where is that going to be. Um, I'd like to see the laydown area specified on here too as well right. because you know we are um, the wetland although you know the bank is obvious there is wetland that go, grows along the bank in certain spots there even if there's a bulkhead yeah. here it depends on where your laydown area is but I'd like to probably going to pick something that's already pretty clear Doug is my guess. Well I mean am I being penny wise and pound foolish here and trying to save the town from hiring an engineer to do an engineered site plan, a botanist to identify wetlands and contours and everything else. I mean, again, I'm looking at this as a deferred maintenance project and didn't think we needed to do that. But if you're telling me I need to go to my client, i.e. our town, and say, hey, you need to hire an engineer, they need to get a botanist, we need to flag well, the wetlands, we need to do, we need to yeah, do, we need, I'll do it. I, I'm just sure I if the is necessary. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it is necessary because I, I, we know <coughs> where the pond is. We know there's fish there. We're just, um, there's two issues. I, I think. still think One the wetlands needs to be flagged. 
Um, pardon? I think the wetlands. Oh, you need think to the go wetlands go. needs to be Which means we're doing yeah. a botanist. Yeah. Needs a botanist. That I think you need the botanist. I don't know about the engineer. I just think you. Well, need someone's got to put it on paper and give you right. contours and delineate all the stuff for you. Which it's not going to be me, and it's certainly not going to be Dallas. Well, but it's not. You're not working on the wetlands. No. Um, you're working on. I mean, I, I was fascinated <laughs> by the fact that it's a whole monolith cement block. That whole thing is just one cement block. Oh, here's the, here's the thing that scares right? me more. This is only phase A. We've got to come right down to the water with this work. All It's all concrete. It all needs this work. So I want to, you know, this is the dry run, folks. This is the how is this going to work? How are we going to do it? <coughs> but whatever you say we have to do, I mean, are you going to tell the town you can't fix your monument? I mean, is it going to come to that? Oh, because no, but, but I think we spoke before that they're doing the bridges over water. Yeah. So there's a way to contain it's 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 just we don't know the answers for you. Okay. It's part yeah. of the problem is that I don't think we really have enough information so, to know how they normally do that containment to help you with that dog. Mm -hmm. That that may need that may be really the answer. Um, I, I think I don't think we need an yeah. engineered plans guys, <laughs> but I, my opinion is we need at least I think it's got to the point that when you get your bidders and they tell you and you can tell us what they do, then we'll know more about it. Mm -hmm. we, we can make more, uh, more educated decisions at that point. Somebody has done this many a times over. Like mm -hmm. I said, they're doing the Bourne Bridge. Yeah. There's nothing going into the water. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be done. We just don't know. We're just a board of volunteers here. Mm -hmm. So, like myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole table is, yeah. But it, it, I think that would be the best bet to help us understand more. Okay. I, I really do. It. Now, I if, if we're flagging... Uh, the now, I'm, I'm the only one that no. seems to think that okay. the flagging needs to be done, but... I, I, think, I, I think we've achieved, though, what you were looking for, because you were looking for, and, and the, the engineer actually asked there, they were looking for suggestions for your bid, what, what words or terms to include in your bid. Mm -hmm. So it seems that we have been talking about, um, that we highlighted the resource areas, uh, we talked about parking and, um, you know, that, that, that it will have to be within your plan where you're going to park your vehicles, mm -hmm. that there will have to be some protocol for collecting liquids, mm -hmm. um, very important. And then we'll have to know a little bit more about the chemicals that are being used. And I think the idea of that is, is there less invasive chemicals that be used? Yeah. And I did one more suggestion yeah. for yourself. When you're doing this and so forth, to help it with phase two and beyond. Yeah. If we just, if you just came in once and explained everything, how these contractors do this, it'll make our decisions easier for the future. I will be happy to stay in touch as much as you'd like. Yeah, that, that'd be fine. <laughs> it's just so that you don't have to keep coming back and we have to keep asking these questions. Mm -hmm. Excellent. The biggest issue, I think, is just the containment. I mean, right. That's, that's yeah. the number one which is why we're here to make yeah. the And I'd say you did have to, in, inside that spec, they should have to be 100% 100% cleaned up every day, just in case we do have, say we have a rain event and they left all the well, just chemicals the, the, inside the just containment Just the vandalism area, right? alone right. issue that you might have with that. Right. And that if they do store anything on site, that it's in a lock container of some kind same up, thing upland. Too, they did address it in here also too. Um, the time when they're gonna do do this, does it coincide with kids swimming in the, the, the pool there? I mean, can they do it at that time? When are you the that's, 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 that's a, a management issue for the town. Okay. The town well, has said when no. Are, when are you thinking of doing okay. this? Um, early spring, uh, we, we're hoping actually to start fall, but obviously we're running out of time and the temperature's an issue. Mm -hmm. And the other point that was made by Daedalus, which I thought was just remarkably salient and right on, on target, is the people who are qualified to this are already booked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're not going to get anyone this fall, but if you put it out to bid this fall, find out where you're going to get to do it Next and get fall. them online to start yeah. as soon as the weather breaks. So it will be as soon as the weather breaks because, you know, we can't close Island Grove Bridge when there's swimming going on. We can't have this stuff going on when there's swimming going on. So it's as early in the spring as we can get it done and agree to get the contractor to work with us to get it done. Excellent. So that's, that's the planning on that. What's the anticipated timeline from staff? Actually, very know? quick. It was less than two months. Okay. Really, the bronze stuff can happen in, in days. Yeah. It's, it's concrete. It can, we just don't know what we're going to have to do to clean it. It's try this, try this, try this. Right. Um, the grouting should be fairly straightforward. There's just a lot of it, mm -hmm. you know, because it's cracked to hell. 
and, and the grout will you know match and blend in as much as it can. I think if you get close, you're still going to see the cracks, but from a distance, it should right. appear more monolithic as it did in 1912. <laughs> and as far as all the research that's been done up to this point, which is pretty extensive, um, mm -hmm. do you have a rough idea in terms of the pool of qualified contractors that exist? Actually, Daedalus does. I don't. I okay. mean, they were kind of naming them off. I'll share with you, we're in kind of a weird position here. Uh, Daedalus was called in by the last town manager and by the town moderator. Uh, they are people who normally do the work, not specify it. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, someone finally said, hey, wait a minute, this is public work, you have to bid it, and turned to Daedalus and said, can you write this back? And they said, well, I guess we can, we don't normally. And, and they're kind of upset that this really will say that they can't do the work because mass bidding laws say mm -hmm. if you're creating the work, you can't bid on the work. And, and, and so Designers can't we're kind of it. shooting ourselves in the foot in that one of the most qualified contractors to do, particularly the bronze work, not concrete, but the bronze work now won't be able to bid on it because he specified it. Oh. But that was the situation, the way it came about. And, and I'll share with you this other brief little story, <coughs> which will hopefully make you feel better about current town management, that um, the gentleman from Dedalus said, I was there standing with the town manager and I pointed to the water and I said, do I have to worry about that? And he said, no, we own that. <laughs> I heard that and I said, what? <laughs> Seriously? He told you that? I, I was, you know, beside myself. So again, they walked into this expecting conservation commission. Why do we have to talk to them? Yeah. Uh, they have so never done a conservation commission filing in their lives. Never. That's why I did it. You know, I said, I, I've done these before. and. Hopefully I can pull something together that will make some sense, and, and I guess it makes limited sense, but I pulled it together no, nonetheless. No, it, it, <laughs> I think it's it done a lot. Sense. <laughs> yes, I think, we, and I loved reading it. That was just incredibly exhaustive detail. It was fascinating. Thank you. I learned a lot of words. And I, <laughs> a lot of words. <laughs> yes, it was, it was just a fascinating thing. Um, so, so I think we're able to move on. Um, if I mean, we can't do orders because um, we don't have a DP number anyway. Uh, but I think we're waiting for the contractor. But that sounds, this is enough, presumably, for you to go out to bid. It should have been, poor Daedalus, it should have been sent out a bid immediately. They shouldn't have even got one of the poor contractors to sign off on it, you know, at the beginning, I, I would think. But I know nothing about that. But, yeah. Um, but, um, but that's it. They should, but well, the next time we see you, it'll probably be with a contractor. It's more guidance than we've had. And you've certainly, by having these discussions, told us what the specifics you'll be looking for, which then we can put in the bid specifications to say, be prepared to, you know, which is fine. We'll just increase our bid specs. Um, how shall we handle this paper-wise if we're not getting an order yet? Just continue it indefinitely because we have well, a, we're going to have a number and and you're not going <laughs> to issue an order yet. So how? Well, you're going to come back. We don't have enough information to issue. An okay, order. But it's, that's, it's, that's what it says. If so you don't feel like you do, it's going to be months before we get a contractor. So that's it's okay. just not going to well, be. Know, we meet every two okay. weeks. Um, and in fact, we can always, you know, uh, have an emergency meeting too, if necessary. But, um, but we meet every two weeks. I, I think we've been able to move very quickly. So it's not going to be a problem. We'll be around. Yeah, we can still, um, even for the, the what the hearing wise goes, we can still extend that or continue it every yep. 30 days. I think I, I, I just like need to ask for an indefinite right. continuance until we've resolved who the better will be. Who the yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll have to. Bid is awarded to. Right. Yeah, I'll have to look at that. Nancy mm -hmm. and I looking to notice that. We actually, it's funny you should mention that because the next item involves all that mm -hmm. but, um, okay. uh, on our agenda. But absolutely, it's, you know, I look forward to seeing you again with the contract. You will. I hope we've given you enough Just information. Now, <coughs> this is going to go out to bid now. Yes, public bid. Advertise the whole deal. By the time you come back here, you'll have a contractor. Um, it sounds like I shouldn't waste your time until I do. That, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> and that way, the contractor can come in and tell us what he's going to do, and then we can look at it. If, yeah. if there are, I think that's the simplest right. way to do things. Yeah. If there are any questions from any of the contractors, mm -hmm. if you can get them to, uh, what I guess, Nancy, yeah. we can put them on our agenda sure. and Certainly. discuss now, any of the questions that they might have. We are going to have a pre-bid conference on site, which is usually when a lot of those questions come up and where they're going to see the proximity to wetlands and see the material and see everything firsthand. Now, I certainly don't mind inviting any or all of you to attend that. What I just I don't know. What I might suggest is that you take the, the
this is what mm -hmm. often happens is that you take the questions mm -hmm. and bring them back if mm -hmm. you want to ask us. Okay. We'll try to answer them, but then we can answer as a full board. As, uh, that's what that, that kind of is my point, as, as I'm suspecting and no one can speak for the board. And, yeah. and it would give us a chance to talk amongst ourselves to decide what the answer should okay. be. Conservation commissioners are permitted to go to the locus. They're the one group amongst all the town meetings that actually can go. And, um, you know, a yeah. few of them can go together, and there's not a problem with the open meeting law. The only problem is when we discuss the topic, mm. you know, the project out there. And so we wouldn't be able to go out and discuss it. Right. Um, it would have to be discussed back here at a public meeting. The only yeah. possible advantage is it would be you'd be hearing the questions firsthand as opposed to me asking them. Oh, so I'll, I'll, stop so I'll, 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 you I'll make you aware yeah. of when okay, it is. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just we're not going to be able to answer them on site. Because gotcha. Yeah. No, I never answer on site either. If, well, <laughs> if we had an agent, we might they, they may be able to speak, but we wouldn't be able I got to. It. Cool. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, thank this has been very productive. I thank you all for your input and your patience. <laughs> no, thank you very much. There's a lot to digest here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. <coughs> yes, we're gonna. Can I have a motion to um, continue this hearing on um, the abbreviated notice of intent filed by the town of Abington for the restoration of 200 Park Avenue? Can I have a motion to continue that. I'll make a motion we continue that. Um, do I have a second? I'll second. second. Oh, yeah. Mike All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on, um, the next item is actually something that constantly is continued. This is Zero Adam Street. Um, I'm at the meeting of 84-465. Um, a DP number. Now there we've, we've got a request and there's a new email. No, you probably have that one, but um, it's the beginning of October. Um, but our, the beginning of October is our space meeting, so it would be that date. So they don't want to come before us until they've done the planning. This is to do with um, the water distribution, I think. Um, and so they've um, asked, can we can they come in October? We have one meeting October 8th, which we're all excited about, which is the open me uh, space meeting. So Nancy suggested maybe October 22nd. Would it be okay? Um, it's that they have asked to continue, the, um, the, the landowner has asked to continue the um, meeting till October. Would it be okay with you to meet us in October 22nd? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So. Um, and um, can I have a motion to continue then the hearing to October 22nd? Do I have a, somebody to propose that motion? I'll make a motion to Bill. continue to October 22nd. Thank you. And second? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. I have a question, Dennis. Yes. Because this has been posted so many times, could we ask them to... Um, a butter notification. A butter notification and re advertise because it's been quite a long time and we just keep moving it. I don't know how anyone would keep track of it. Is there anybody here for that? For I, don't think so. that? I don't think so, but yeah. um, so it's I'm just good due diligence, I think. Okay, so I'll ask them to re notice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> do, you, do you want the, the butter notification just first class or? Yeah, it doesn't, whatever that, that thing you just did. Because we have to do it too. And that'll be a cost. It'll be, a co it'll be an additional cost. Why, we have why to, for us? Do we have to know? No, they do. Okay, they do. They do. They yeah. do. Okay. Yeah, but I'm okay with that new thing you've been doing, Nancy. Whatever you yeah, call it. Yeah, I mean, it's in the regulations. Yeah, I like it. Okay. It's cheaper. All right, so we're happy with that. Okay, then uh, moving on to new business. Um, and um, before I take um, the first one is to talk about um, the enforcement order that I did for the library. Before I do that, we have somebody here on an item. So, um, commissioners, if I may, I would like to put an item because the lady's been waiting here at our meeting um, on on the agenda. Um, what address is it that you want to talk to about? I don't know what the actual street address. Do you want to come up? <coughs> yeah, sure. And it's. Harvard Street. This is um, Ann Welch, right? Yes. Okay. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Ann Welch. I live at 81 Highland Road. Uh, this is just an information 
Right. Because we have to notice the town when we actually talk about something, discuss. Oh something. yeah, yeah. So no, no, this no, no. is just um, information. Yeah. We're waiting all this time to talk about it. No, no, no. Um, Highland. Um, Highland Road, and his property is 43 Highland Road. Adjacent to that is a dirt road that's called Harvard Street. It's a paper street. At the top of the hill, there is a lot that was a house lot for those of you that are townies that used to be right behind Mary Barrett's house, which is now the strip mall that's vacant. Um, I come out of concern and also request from this committee to go out and do a site visit. Um, Mr. D'Andrea has been told on a number of occasions by the former committee um, that he is not to be doing any clearing so, of that property so because I'm, of... What is he doing? What, what's happening? Well, he's up there with, the, like, the bobcat, and he's clearing, and I can hear him out there. The, the, the sirens, the, the sound of when they're cutting trees. And to complicate it is that he, are, he currently has a cease and desist order from any vehicles using that road. So clearly he's using the bobcat to get it from his bay up that road to do whatever he's clearing up from there. From who does he have a cease and desist From road? the building well, inspector. Building inspector. Yeah. There's a current it's cease and desist order. I see. So it's, but there are <coughs> the Island there. Road, is that the road that Goes up to Mount Laurel. <coughs> yeah, but exactly. they never let it went, it doesn't go through. No, there's gates. Mm, right. There's okay. gates at the top of the hill. And there's a there's a brick building on the right hand side, correct? Yeah, no, that's it's 43 Highland. 43 no. Highland, Vinny D'Andrea. So it's there's a big a, brick building? Right, yeah. and she's talking about the property on the right, right next to it. <coughs> so you go up Highland. Yeah, it doesn't, is that the old Warner house? Warner's, Warner's father up no. the street. Yeah, Warner's, Warner's father up. Yeah, if you, if you go on into Highland Road, that building is on the right, and there's like an auto <coughs> detailing and a motorcycle shop yeah. and, and Vinny's stuff. But then there's a dirt road that goes up in between that and the next property. Oh. At the top of that hill, there's a vacant lot, which he owns. Oh, okay. And he's been, t like I say, I know <coughs> for a fact that Mr. Bazanson has been out there on a number of occasions within the last couple of years advising him that before he is to touch any of that property, he needs to get some sort of an evaluation. I don't know what the terminology is, but he needs some sort of an evaluation, I think, to determine where the wetlands are before he does any clearing. And Alex has stopped him in the past, but now there's a new board, and I don't know if it was ever formally documented or if he's ever come in before you. So that's what I come before you now is to ask for someone from this group, can they go up and look at it and make a determination if in fact it is does is protected and if so he needs to be be formally told again you can't do this okay. you need to come before us before you do that okay so this is in nature of a complaint we get many of them yeah. um where it's um, loud. we do go out and have a look um, <laughs> we look nancy and i look and see if there is an open file on 43 highland street so that oh, i'm sure there is <laughs> Well, there was, we did look at a different area. Right, uh, across the, the street. That's right. Um, so um, we look at that, and um, we'll certainly go yeah, out and yes. see. It's the same person? Okay. Yeah, that's we, what I was going to ask. So we go out and have a look. Not a problem. You're going to need the lot number. So that's the guy who's here. Here's your few months. Oh, yeah. What are yeah. the yeah. lot July. numbers for that? Yeah, I was at your July meeting. meeting. Okay. Well, we might be able to find out from this. I didn't realize that when I came here tonight until Nancy sent me the note. I didn't realize. But that's my concern. I, I will tell you, it's very disruptive. It's loud. It's he's out there from like sun up to sundown, with without stopping. Um, and as I said, if you check with the building inspector, there is a current cease and desist order. He's not even supposed to be using that road. But for us, there's wetlands. Right? Exactly. Okay. Sure. Because I know that there are other. I'm in a butter. I'm a direct to butter. The way my property goes, I at the back end of my property, I'm his a butter. But there's also other abutters that would be affected by it. Right. So before you leave, um, maybe I'll, um, if we could get your uh, the card, maybe you could uh, write your name, um, name, phone oh, sure. and address. I always say it over sure. the TV. We're just, and, um, Thank you, Dennis, contact. I appreciate that. Okay, so we're, I problem. think she's talking about, this is like the cleared area up here. Um, what I know is that 
you know, the corner, this house lot on the corner here, there's um, a stream that goes along there deep. You've seen the MHC flag. The behind the Owens. And I think it's behind Larry and, and yes. Pat Owens' house. Right. It's but Owens are here. No, Vin and Eddie's is over here. This is on the other Name, address, oh, and phone number, Dennis. Is yes. that what you yes. said? Yes. 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 The address. Yeah. So, so, but, um, the Owens house is right Do you want my house. email so that's address? That's address? That's yeah, that's good. And the wetlands that I know of. Because I do it on Route 18. They go straight back. And where it goes, his property does extend pretty far back. It just shows part of it. So his property goes behind the Owens? Yes. And it goes. Yeah, it does. It goes. It's just, it's an empty lot. I don't think it's buildable. I don't think he has enough square footage to do anything on it, except to irritate the neighbors by going up there with that backhoe and just you know shoveling rocks and dirt so and it'll, it'll map it'll kind of like what he's doing in the open lot at the end of on, on Bedford Street it will just matter how quick how close he is okay, cool. to the wetlands Thank you so, very so much. that's Thank all you that's, all, that's all that's yes, all I ask it, you know if he's right. within his well, rights really to do what he's doing that then so be it I live behind. with it but I'm behind her knowing house, that the former chair person has addressed this with him verbally Okay. and told him he, he shouldn't so, be touching that oh, until he has top, whatever I, evaluation I needs there to is be done one at Vin and, and presented before you. It raises a red flag for me. Is one on Not only that, but with the, the fact that it's very annoying to listen to that all day long. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, that's the one you're talking about. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you all. That's the one you're talking about across the street. Okay, that's all right. Thank you for responding, Nancy. sort of pushing gravel into that. Those was no, Gioso's across, oh, no, no, across the street. Across Highland Street. Yeah, there's like a, a open that lot. Would, yes. And then there's that used to be uh, the uh, flower Friday, shop. Yes. Friday. Friday, but now it's it's got okay, the kids the yeah, kids Very place. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, gentlemen, can we move to, that was a complaint that we heard um, yes. that was under new business, but we're going to move to um, ratifying the enforcement order at 760 Dr. Is that the <coughs> Yep. Yeah. The, the library was at the last minute. Oh, I see. Yeah, I really didn't like it. Oh. Because this is moving on to the next one. Oh, my God. How many of these do I do? <laughs> I see. All right. Okay. So I'm actually the person. But that leads on to one of the topics I'm going to talk about tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Good night, Anne. Thanks, Cal. So um, the health inspector, Ms. White, contacted Nancy and I because in her investigation of that area for health, the health board, she noticed um, a covered culvert. Um, and so we went out to have a look at it. And actually, I did take photographs. Of course, I don't have them here. But literally, it is, it's up in Brockton Ave. Um, and there's a liquor store there. And right beside the liquor store is this um, dry drain. <coughs> but you know, um, the whole idea is that when it floods, that, that drain is used. And there's two huge cement culverts on either side. And one of them, Links to a tunnel that actually go a drain that goes under the the road under uh, Brockton Ave. Yeah. Yeah. So it may connect to something on top of it. So Pardon? It may connect as well. So that's cool yeah. to another yeah. wetland. And so on the other side, the is, I, I don't know if it's wetlands, but it's certainly you know vegetation on the other side. And what they did apparently is well, I'm not sure, but I, what they did was they got um, all the dirt and bottles and trash that were near their their mm -hmm. thin. They were told to move it. So they moved it and I just moved it on the um, culvert. And I'm ashamed to say I haven't gone back to check. I was going to go back to check, see if they remove it. They were going to remove it this way. Dennis, is that when you're looking at the liquor store to the right while the rocks are? Yes. That was there today. And is it still there? It was cl all cleaned up. Oh. They, they've been the cutting tree, all, all trees. I, in I, I drove around that building, the, the yeah. liquor store, That's and, I, and I didn't. I didn't understand what the problem was, because so they must have cleaned it up. I did the he same thing. He was going to move it. Oh, I, I didn't get out. Of, I didn't get out of my truck. I just, I just looked at him. I'm saying to myself, well, what, they, what, they, what, they, what is the problem? Well, they, it's all cleaned up. He was going to do it that weekend. You know, the municipal office. That's the problem. Is the municipal offers like the health inspector and the. A building inspector, they need um, somebody like the Conservation Commission to do this emergency order, this enforcement order, so they can act. It kind of covers them in their investigation. So that's why they kept calling me on this. I did go out on Friday night at about a quarter to five. It was it. blocked. You can see where it comes from the neighborhood behind there. Uh -huh. and it comes right down. It, yeah. and it looked clean. He so was going to. When you went there, was it pretty obvious what the problem was? Yeah. All right. And oh, now, it's, yeah. now it's remedied. 
So, and so he, he was going to do it that weekend. The poor guy was going to do it that weekend. So, Dennis, you need us to uh, ratify the enforcement order because I you do. issued it. Yeah, uh, but it has been resolved now from our investigation. That's cool. So all I need is for you to sign the enforcement order. Okay, so we should probably vote, right? Yes. Do I have a vote to approve I my make, enforcement order? I make order? a motion to approve. Thank you. I second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and do we have the order? Is I have one here. Will we use this? Yeah. Sign off on it. Okay, so I'm going to hand around the one. Just make sure. <coughs> so just, just sign this. This is where we round the fire. And while we're signing that, so I think that closes out that issue. Okay, of um, 76 o'clock now, which has been resolved. Um, I'd like to raise another issue, which I don't want us to make any decisions tonight. But some conservation commissions have enforcement officers. These are members on the commission. You know, here it might be two people that the health inspector or the building inspector can actually call up. At the moment, it's the chairperson. So I, I go out and um, go out, and that's why I do the reports for you and, and the letters and the photographs and all that stuff. But um, I see that other commissions and the MACC recommends that there should be an enforcement officer that goes out and has a look at these issues. Much like <coughs> if we had a full-time conservation agent, that guy would be going out or woman would be going out and having a look and seeing what's happening. If there was a problem, they could act instantly. Because um, we rely on the health inspector and the building inspector to do our job, and of course, Kenan, the highway department, to do our job for us. What do you think about having the enforcement officer? It's only because I talked to other conservation commission agents, or whatever you want to call them, but work in Hingham, they have a full time one, and uh, I think in Noel, they have a full time one. <coughs> you can't just arbitrarily, and I was told this. The only people that can actually go on somebody's property, unless you're invited, you can get thrown off the property, uh, is a police officer with a warrant. Right. I mean, you can <coughs> you can ask to go on the property, and if they give you permission, yes, but you can't arbitrarily. As a matter of fact, her name was Pine Dubois, the fight and hang him for doing that. She used to just show up and hide mm -hmm. on people's property. Well, we, we never do that. I mean, whenever no, no, I we go out, I mean, even <coughs> if I actually walk the pro in fact, I always put in my letter, You'll notice that I always talk about how I chatted with the landowner, mm -hmm. and in that case, I walked with the poor guy who owns, who manages the. Um, but we do. Store. But we, if we do have an active filing with us, you know that we have approved. We actually do have jurisdiction to go on and check no, you progress. Don't. Uh, you, you, you only actually you can, you can, can issue a cease and desist. Yeah. <coughs> but unless you have permission to go on somebody's property, and I was told this by a real conservation commission. I mean, we're for the town. I mean, that I mean, I, you, just, not. you can't just go walk on someone's <coughs> property like right. any of these enforcement that, orders. So what I was saying, if we have an active filing on a site, yeah, it, we have the ability to go that's, on. That's, that's the determination. If somebody comes in and files like a notice of intent, notice of intent. Oh yeah, okay. and then that actually gives. Right, but if, if you have a complaint, right, we can something like, like you're can. saying. Yeah. Right, that's, the that's complaints, the, yes. but the complaint you would need to contact the property owner and right. get permission, unless you can view it from the street. Yeah. Anything you can view from the public is, is yeah. fair game. Right. We've never had that problem. Although, actually, Jerry, you had that problem with a DP visit, didn't you, to um, mm -hmm. the bridge? Mm -hmm. When a DP guy was looking at Temple Street or something, was yeah. there some <laughs> issue? Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, that's okay. If there is an issue, we can deal with it. But I was, I, what I was talking about is not a, a guy that's patrolling to see if there's problems with the wetlands, but really somebody that... <coughs> the building inspector or the um, he you know health inspector can contact at the moment they contact me and Nancy but that that they um, can go out um, you know at that day because often I'm not able to do it go out that day and look at it now you know we all have jobs so it's very hard to do it but um, but that might be <coughs> not all of us Okay. <laughs> 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 about Michael? <laughs> about Jerry? Well, I think I think he's holding up his end a lot already, <coughs> doing the um, work permits, the uh, you know the um, the building permits. He's doing a lot of those. But but that might be an issue. Um, we might think just as much as we have a treasurer and vice president, we might think <coughs> we have an enforcement officer. So I just leave that I, with you. I agree with. It. I mean. I would do it if I had the time, but yeah. it's one of those things the same, you know, if I'm around town, that's fine, but if I'm working someplace else, it's, you just can't leave a job. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. so and I, I have that problem too. You know, <coughs> they, they actually want you, they're usually on site and they're calling asking you to come out because like I say, they need a commission, mm -hmm. like Conservation Commission, as um, you know, to back them up in the investigation. But I'm often not able to do it. I'm, you know, Unless we have it, whereas you start off with one phone and <coughs> just keep calling yeah. every one of the commissioners to see if somebody's around. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that could be it, you know. But it's just, we seem to be doing quite a few enforcement orders. Does anybody notice that? Mm. We yes. <laughs> I just speak personally. I seem to be going out on a lot of them lately. Um, okay. Um, is it, before you go off, is, is it possible to ask even somebody from the highway department, like the... Uh, no, you can't do it. <coughs> I don't okay. think so. That's I, that, that, that would be. Yeah. <coughs> I don't think so. I mean, it has to be. We're talking about a commissioner. We're talking right. about somebody. That yeah, I just your, I didn't know if somebody in town could just do something or. Yeah. Um, you no, know, and Dennis, honestly, all, I think all of us would go out if if any of us were here. Yeah. And and I, but I have the same problem. I think. Most, yeah, most I mean, people I, do. I just well, can't. I usually short circuit. I hate, you know, to um, distract you from your job and all on this. Then we're all but, volunteers. But There's a limit to how we can do it. But and that's why I try and explain to the officers that, you know, uh, we'll be out there when we can. Mm -hmm. But, but I know, think it's I, very I hard for them to understand. We can, that, we, can, so. we can think about it maybe a little bit. Maybe yeah. something will come to us. I mean, the, the methods that have been used since we've uh, come on board, I mean, just sending out broadcast messages, is there anybody close by that can address this? I think that responsiveness has been pretty good from what I yeah. know. That's right. And, you know, I think we've, we've dealt with all the emergencies pretty well so far. Sure. Yeah. In fact, the building inspector was surprised when we all came out. I remember that one day in, you mm -hmm. know, Center Street or something. He couldn't believe it when we came out that Friday morning. So I think we've handled it. But, you know, it's something to think about. You know, at the Conservation Commission is always evolving. Get new members. I just suggest to one of the selectmen to have some more of those um, members that unfortunately can't vote, but they're here. It's always a good idea to have those. All right, moving on. Correspondence. Do you have any correspondence? Oh, no, because that was the end and she came. How good is that? So How good is that? <laughs> does, that does anybody have any new, any, um, I, well, sorry, approval of minutes, August 27, 2013. I make a motion to approve the minutes for August 27th. Thank you, Kathy. Second. Bill seconds. All those in favor? I wasn't Aye. Asked. Okay. Oh, you weren't there? I wasn't there. So You're, Joe abstains. Abstain. Joe abstains. Okay. Building permits. Building permits so were all quiet this week. The no, ones I get I from they, Nancy. Yeah, I got, I got a whole list that oh, it just didn't make it when I. Um, so they went pretty well. Everyone she gave me, I did, except the, the uh, Adam Street one, they're going to re come in. So it's, they canceled. Yeah, there were it. like seven. I kept them busy. <laughs> Jerry, I, I let's say again from all of us that we really appreciate you doing well, that. Just I know that Bill and Russ go out too. You're thinking, are you going to be able to? I wish I was busy. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, to do that. It really, yeah. I mean, it helps a lot. It's of course the regulatory department. Is there any other business? Nancy, do um, is zoning having any meetings, and are we getting noticed? Zoning actually didn't meet. Um, in August? In August and subject. Nothing came in. Oh, okay, good. So you will get an October agenda. When so we can see, see what's yeah. on their list. Okay, good. Yeah. Nobody needs but you guys. Nobody's working during the summer about the conservation. <laughs> okay, um, any other new business? So do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thanks, Mike. Yes, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, you could be off the